Ah, uh, hello again. Hello again. Uh, I'm gonna make you my main focus because this is YouTube. And I, have a, and I believe that eventually you guys on YouTube are gonna be pulled off, at least especially once I expose this one. So, I. Sorry. My attention is gonna go up here. You'll see me looking up here all the time, so. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'll begin this thing again. Is this, is this recording? Yeah, I think it's recording. Okay. Okay, it's 10.26 on Halloween. Happy Halloween. And what I'm about to read is kind of Halloweenish, if you know what I mean. So, okay, I'll continue here. Alright. I need a haircut. Okay. Marsha says, Are you sure he was a Muslim? Look at that. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know. For he seemed to have major problems uh, with Islam before he even did the Shahada. Of course, he was not. He was he was awfully crushed when the Saddam statue went down instead of the Kurds possibly opening up. Uh, possibly get, opening it up to... Uh, getting even with God, but I, I, I can't see him doing that at all, so to this day, it is a big, strange mystery. He did later mention something about his version of the Samson option. And Marsha asks, uh, like what Israel has if we attack it, and all out launch of nuclear missiles at uh, Shria capitals, including Mecca, Medina, and Washington, D.C.? The command then says, not exactly. I'm thinking it was something different. Uh, for one thing, in order for Samson to bring down the house of Dagon, where it would be at its most crowded at one time, God made Samson weak, uh, made him human, like the Philistines. So he would not only be captured, but gather a huge crowd of those God bent on destroying by their eagerness to make fun of Samson and not realize that Samson was still under the hand of God either by design or by error. Uh, before Aaron began his all attack on Islam, he, he gathered hundreds of thousands of Muslim eyes on him with that poem he found in the New Yorker he made a video of. Yeah. Then Marcia says, asks, uh, they orbited the Twilight Zone? That's the one about the second sh space shuttle disaster. It got thousands into Islam and made Brian Muhammad Hamzi Aaron famous. By then, he was like Samson, standing at the pillars of Dagon, only this time at the pillars of Allah. Marcia, hmm. uh, where have I heard the name Muhammad Hamzi? It, it, it seems like I just heard it recently before I met you. Then the good man says, Then he started to push at those pillars with the videos that uh, exposed Islam for what it truly was. Marshall says, uh, Videos that exposed Islam. The good man says, at, And the sport of him being one of theirs quickly faded. And like Samson, he was the first to possibly be crushed, uh, getting stabbed to death in what he brought onto himself in his attempt to bring down the house of Dagon, or in this case, the Kaaba, the house of Allah. Martha says, watch him hit that man, look at the, look at, uh, look for it in the bookshelf. Hmm. So, so Aaron was famous in Islam, you say. So the man then says, I take it you really, I, I take it you are really a Muslim in name only. Uh, the assistant says, we're going to have to wrap this up, Marsha. The Marsha says, watching the hooky man. Look for it in the bookshelf. Okay. Oh, one more thing. How are you able to unleash more video onto the coastal highway? Uh, now, how, how are you able to unleash more video on the coastal highway today? You have that much money to pay fine? Hook man stops looking for the book, turns slowly to the, the two, uh, uh, to the two,
Uh, there's a shock on the hooded man's face. There's more of it. Marsha says, "Those are the reports coming in. You sure you, you you sh you sure you're a friend? You're, you're, are you sure your friend is dead?" Hooded man says, "Maybe it's a copycat. Maybe Brian started a new way of disposal of old videotapes. He used to uh, pick up video on the side of the road." That he'd find and play it, but it was nothing, just mostly porn and horror movies. Hey, maybe I'm not the only one? Well, here's the movie scripts, the messages from Gage of Earth. I wonder how much I can get for it, now being that it has those special instructions still in it. Marsha then says, I wonder, who looks at the assistant, can you, can you get this? Assistant nods. Amazing. Suddenly, Marsha's eyes bulge. Uh, who is Niles Neville? I, I thought you said Brian Aaron wrote this. And Luke and says, Oh, Aaron wrote it all right. Niles Neville, Niles Neville was his uh, pen name. You more to part of Marsha. Uh, Muhammad looks disturbed. The assistant seeing the shock in his the boss's eyes. At, uh, at what? W what's the matter, Muhammad? Marcia, with a shock and even terror in her eyes. Neville. I can Act in end of Act 2. Now Act 3. The last act in this play. Okay. When the lights come on, the Imam is smiling as people walk by, congratulating him on another sermon. Suddenly, a guy who seems to be in his sixties and carrying a sack of uh, a sack approaches him. In the sack is a lot of videotapes sticking out over it. The man is wearing sunglasses and is smiling. The Imam, looking at, a bit concerned, smiles. "You don't look familiar. Are you new here?" Says the Imam. Then the, man, then the sunglasses wearing man says in a gravelly. Uh, stereotypical biker voice. Call me Muhammad Tom from Virginia City, brother. I got something for you. Imam, what is it? Muhammad Tom says, check it out. Starts digging around in, a, in all the video tape. Oh, it's something around here, bro. Imam looking scared. Uh, scared. Uh, uh, what is that? Tom says, you're going to like this, brother. Really, you're going to like this. Pull something up. What's that say on the bottom of, of the reel? Imam looks... Look, uh, Imam says, Looks like Quran 9? Yep, brother. Quran 9. This is what I picked up on the coastal highway not long ago. It's part... It's a part of messages from the edge of Earth, brother. I was riding my Harley down Highway 1 with my guys... Thought I'd decide to pick some of it up, and lo and behold, this is what I found. Ain't that something, brother? Imam says, wow, Quran 9. Wow, Quran 9. Then Tom says, yeah, I wonder how much is playable and should be added to the Book of Brian. <laughs> well, I wonder. Here, it's yours, brother. He turns and leaves at the. He, he turns and leaves as the imam picks up the sack with uh, suspicion in his eyes. Then Jabari, walking up to the imam, says, "Brother, what was that?" The imam says, "A biker who said he found Quran 9 unraveled on the coastal highway, and thinks that it could be added to the Book of Brian." Then Jabari, rolling his eyes, "Oh, brother, brother, that's the second time someone did this in a mosque." How much you want to bet? It's like it's all a bunch of blank tape as well. Like him. Lights come on. Reporter Marsha Mohammed and her assistant are still with the hookah smoking man. Marsha says, "Well, it's you, you know stuff. I'm gonna have to stop this here or." Uh, I won't be able to, uh, it's for my own personal reasons, I'm going to stop you. Okay. Okay.
Okay, this is part, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, lights came. Okay, now the lights come back on. Lights come on. Reporter Marsha Muhammad and her assistant are still with the hookah smoking men. Marsha says, Well, it's been a pleasure interviewing you, Mr. Ford, but guess what? I'm not using you for a story. Thinking of taking back. What? Why not? Marsha says, Oh, I'll use some of it, but I'm keeping it quiet for a while that uh, that Brian is dead. That will be our little secret, okay? The assistant asks, Why, Mohammed? Marsha then says, The mom uh, talked down to me like I was an idiot and brought up and brought up the fact that when Muhammad looked into hell he, as the Sahih Hadith report, that he saw that most uh, in there were women because they uh, curse more and show ungratefulness toward their husbands. Also because you women, as he said, bleed once a month and are, quote, deficient in intelligence. And he brought up how one man's testimony is worth the testimony to women. He told me he wouldn't even go for me if I was as old as Aisha. He said I looked like a stupid whore, and all I do on TV is make men want to go to hell with my painted up eyes. The project manager heard him and agreed. Pretty soon I'll be either uh, I'll either be in a burqa or I'll be fired. Get this: the imam that said that if I don't cover it up better, I should be. Laura Logan. Look at man, what? Marsha then says, raped. He was telling me I should be raped, since Laura Logan was raped. She was a reporter during the Muslim spring in Egypt. The last uh, thing he said to me was, Sunan Abu Dawud 2, 2150, and he smiled wildly. Look at man says, what is Sunan Abu Dawud 20... What, what, what is Sunan Abu Dawud 2, 2150? And Marsha says, the allowance of a man uh, of a Muslim to rape women in the presence of their infidel husbands when they are captured in jihad. It explains why there is Quran 424, which al which also allows for slavery in Islam and having someone's wife for sex if she's your slave. It totally removes any com any complaint African American any complaint African Americans might have for the time the US had slavery. And the assistant says, well, what are you going to do? We drove clear out to San Rafael for nothing? Marcia then says, again, we'll use all the parts he talked to us and say he doesn't know what happens to Niles Neville. I want the imam to squirm. I mean, if it's known that, Niall, that Neville is dead, his whole mosque will celebrate its sounds, including him big time. I've decided to not give him such a pleasure. I want him to squirm before I'm fired. Agreed? Assistant. Pause. Nani. Um, assistant says, me like you. Look at man named Ford. Says, I don't care. It's, it's, it's your story. Go for it. Uh, of course, I say truth is where it's at. Brian Aaron valued truth more than anything. Truth to him was God. Possibly why he didn't stay in Islam more. The Marsha says, well, we're Muslim, so it's okay to lie. It's called Takiyah. Look it up. Like him. Before the lights come on, the TV sets lighten up. The sets have words saying, highlights of Mohammed Pedro Martinez video reel now downloaded to the internet. Yeah, highlights of Mohammed Pedro Martinez's video reel now downloaded to the internet. Video footage of Ryan Aaron in a leather biker jacket as it as he reads and interprets parts of Jeremiah 50 and 51. Brian Aaron's in, Brian Aaron in the video says, In those days and at that time, said the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, Going to weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. Brian looks up the camera and says, And it seems to have started in 1948. We have the state of Israel now. Uh, they shall ask the way to Zion with their face 
thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves in the Lord, in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Looks up at the camera again. I'm betting that this part hasn't taken place yet. Uh, my people have been a lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on, on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. So looks up at the camera and says, I feel this part is talking about the Kurds. To me, the Kurds are at least one of the tribes of Israel, and they don't know it, but I feel they will. All that found... Yeah, okay. Uh, all that found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the, hap the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Right! And Nazis called them Christ killers. And with the Kurds, well, look what happened to them with Bush after, after, with, after, what, look what happened to them after Bush refused to help them against Saddam's helicopter gunships in 1991. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth in the land, go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the goats, as the he goats before the flock. For lo, I will ra raise and cause to come against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows, their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. That happened in 1990 and 1991, and face it with cruise missiles and smart bombs as demonstrated in the Gulf War in 1998, our missiles, arrows, were as a mighty expert man. There's a page to Black to show time passing. Then Brian Aaron the video says, And I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, on Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. And look at the camera. It's proved to me that God is not finished with Israel. In those days, and at that time, said the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and shall not be found, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Looks up at the camera and says, And thanks to Islam, the iniquity of Israel is being sought for all the time in Muslim uh, efforts to try to turn the world against God's chosen people. Notice, though, that it says, And I will pardon them whom I reserve. The promised land is going to be reserved for the Jews, for Israel. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved, and the cry is heard among the nations. When Babylon falls, it sounds like World War III breaks out. Thus, the reason for messages from the edge of earth, and putting Habakkuk about and putting Habakkuk about the herald into gear. There's a fade to black to show time passing. Brian Aaron video says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise, uh, raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that raise up against me a destroying wind. And I'll send into Babylon fanners that shall fan her, and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall begin to round about. To me, this was fulfilled when Bush refused to shoot down the helicopter gunships of Saddam that were killing the Kurds and the Shiites. If you see a helicopter, it looks like a giant fan. Believe it or not, the Hebrew word for fanner here uh, is never used anywhere in the Bible that I'm familiar with. It means to be strange. In other words, Jeremiah thought it was, thought that it was strange things. But since it was helicopter gunships that got the Kurds up on the mountains and out of the town, I think the word fanner really fits here in the King James, at least. There is a fade to black to show time passing. Brian Aaron then says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that's made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunk from every wine, therefore the nations are mad. To me, this is very significant because I don't think it's talking about wine here but talking about gasoline, for it was oil and gasoline that we bothered to go to war and kick them on out of Kuwait to begin with. No oil, and uh, Kuwait would probably still be in Saddam's hands. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain, if so she may be healed. 
basically what the camera says. Uh, we tried to heal her with the UN in inspectors, but the mom always blocked them when they were getting too hot. Uh, we would have healed the Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go everyone to his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and lifts up even unto the skies. Get it? Skies? Not sky, but skies. And face it. Due to the no-fly zones, there were three skies over Iraq. One over the Kurds in Operation Northern Watch, one over the Sunnis, and one over the Shiites in Operation Southern Watch. There's a face the black to show contacting. Brian that says, And it shall be, when thou hast made an end to the reading of this book, thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates, and thou shalt say, And then thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and it shall not rise. From the evil that I will bring unto her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Now, those two scriptures here make me think that all the, all of the, all of my messages from the edge of earth might be in vain. That nothing is going to happen until someone chucks a copy of the book of Jeremiah into the Euphrates after reading it. Well, it's very strange scripture there. Um, if messages grabs a lot of attention and someone sees this part of the tape, I wonder if someone will go to Iraq and check a copy of the book of Jeremiah into the river and get things going that way. Ah, uh, we shall see. TV goes dark and the stage lights up revealing Drew and Rachel looking at a laptop. Rachel says to Drew, Well, what do you think about it? Oh, you know something? There's, I gotta stop it here. Okay. All right. Continue here. All right. This is after uh, the Brian uh, Aaron uh, read the Jeremiah fifteen fifty one excerpts from Jeremiah fifteen fifty one on the video, but that was that were captured in a reel of videotape that this uh, Mexican uh, American had in his maybe closet or for all you, for, you know, maybe two decades or so, and the part was played, and then uh, it was uh, turned to digital and put on, like, YouTube-like stuff. Okay, and now they're finally seeing it. So, that was the uh, highest of messages when the edge of Earth when it was be right before, the, you know, because Brian Aaron thought that the curves were going to come down and all hell was going to break loose and rapture and all that stuff. Of course, nothing happened, and he switched it. Well, you'll see uh, how it, what happens later on here. Okay, anyway. Then Rachel says to, to Drew, well, what do you think about that? That was the first time I ever saw how someone truly could end up with a sign saying the end of the world draws nigh. Drew then says, I agree. Well, I don't know if it's uh, if it's the fact that we are oppressed with horrifying Sharia, or if I'm just insane, but those highlights of the Martinez tape gave me a feeling of how it must feel to be given a shot of heroin. I feel hopeless. Never has it seemed so clear to me that God is moving behind things. Sure, nothing came from the Iraq stuff, but the stuff he read onto video sure hit it home to me that God has not forgot the Jews and Israel, and that he will always be with them. And face it, in spite of everything now being under Sharia, Israel stands defiant and then bowed to Allah. It is still a thorn in the best of deceiver's side. Hey, the Kurds may never the Kurds may never have come down like this guy was hoping. It may, yeah. Face, it, hey, the Kurds may ha um, never have come down like this guy was hoping, Rachel, but it certainly makes me think the God of the Bible is real and is still in charge. I, I feel, I feel like celebrating. And Rachel says, "Amazing that the Martinez tape was launched in a golden paper-plated packet on the coastal highway back, way back in uh, 2002. I wonder how many besides Martinez." 
Genesis was launched with him. And three says, it was supposed to. It was supposed to the last to be launched in the in that in the project that was Messages from the Age of Earth. Apparently, the idea of there being a book of Brian, with what survived of Aaron reading the New Testament and other passages of the Bible, is out out the window due to the video launched on the coastal highway due to the 2000 to 2002 discovery. Back then, it was all in paper packet form, flying saucer form made it flying saucer form made the two paper plates stapled together with a video and a note inside them it's now all mixed up with the with the little of what was actually picked up on the side of the coastal highway in our time of messages of messages from the edge which apparently now has nothing to do with the Kurds and Bible prophecy now the sleeper cells Aaron created in the year 2000 are now activated and and downloading what was found on the coastal highway back then. It looks like there is now going to be thousands of the eclipses of this guy on the internet now come in for who knows how long. Rachel then says, and people continue to read into it despite what the movie director said about Aaron. Lights dim and darken over Drew and Rachel, and come over the Imam, Jabari and Malik, who are looking at the laptop as well. Imam Shock says, O-M-A. This is proof, brother, that Jews are so wicked, so wickedly smart, that they were... Oh, shoot. I... I have to examine my life. I, apparently I don't have enough. It goes to show you just how much data is going on to this card. That was that was an eight gig card and it's all filled up again. Can you believe that? Oh well. Can't believe it. So apparently just one video will be able to go on a C D, maybe. That's amazing taking up so much data like that. Oh well, at least it looks good on TV, you know. If you want to put that on, I don't play them on TV, I put them, I put them on YouTube. Oh well. Anyway, I'll end it here. Bye. I'll be back in part eight. I don't know, we'll see.